Good morning, everyone. I'm Luke Moroni here for the Sunday Mindset Session with Tony Meredith. Doing some crazy stuff out there <laughs> and out there, which is very interesting. We're just talking about the Olympics, which is actually our topic for today. Um, really interesting one because Tony was actually asking me what what sport can he actually do when it comes to the Brisbane Olympics in 2032? And I actually said to him, very interesting, Tony, because they are bringing breakdancing into the Olympics. And straight away, he's all in stride in regards to his breakdancing moves. I don't know if it's going to win gold, um, but you know what? 20 points for trying, Tony. It'll win hearts, Luke. It'll win hearts. Uh, do you know that, uh, good morning, by the way, good morning to you, good morning to everyone who's tuning in, and I'm excited about this, the Olympics, and, you know, it's amazing, uh, you know, Brisbane, little old Brisbane, you know, little old Brisbane's going to be an Olympic city in 11 years, and it just shows how much, you know, Brisbane has grown up, obviously I'm biased, uh, but I'm actually not from here originally, I'm from a country town a few hours north of here, but, you know, it's 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 the, been the biggest uh, city that I've been exposed to as a kid growing up, but it's exciting. So, uh, you know, a lot of kids uh, figuring out in 11 years, what are they going to be doing? Uh, which is exciting. And I'm going through the same thing. I'll only be 59. So 59 and 11 years time. wonder what it is that I can be doing. Um, but let me go back to break dancing. When I was young, this is a true. Oh, no. When I was young. Spare the I audience, tr Tony. I truly wanted to be a break dancer when I was young. And mum and dad had signed up for break dancing lessons. This is in the in the eighties when the electric boogaloo was coming into fashion, and you know the bits of cardboard, your ghetto blasters. Anyway, I was incredibly uh, disrespectful and rude to my sister, and the um, training was can't. It was I was not allowed to go, and it was heartbreaking. Oh, it was heartbreaking, Luke. It it really affected me for a long period of time. In fact, I don't know if I'm over it yet. Well, you've got your opportunity. Uh, the Olympic Games are in Brisbane in 2032. We are speaking about the Olympics currently over in Japan. Uh, outstanding for each individual to actually make the Olympic team, let alone um, get a gold, silver or bronze, right? So that is, you know, an outstanding achievement within itself. One of my cousins was actually at the uh, 2000 Olympics, uh, represented Australia in European handball. So- Yeah, wow. Uh, you know, just seeing someone so close, you know, being involved in the Olympics and just to make it there, it's, it's kind of crazy uh, that, you know, you get that opportunity and there's only, look, there's less than 1% of our population that's an Olympian, right? And that's oh, look what it takes. Well, there's, a, there's this time around, I think there's 450, 460 athletes. So if you think about that representing a country of, you know, 25, 6, 7 million, I can't recall what it is. But uh, those who are in front with a calculator, figure that out as a percentage, you know, for this yeah. time round. Um, but yes, in total, oh, it wouldn't even be 1%, uh, Luke. It would be you know, far less than that, you'd think. So uh, it, it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. amazing what we amazing. want to talk about today is really, do you have the mindset of an Olympian? Um, it's a big one. We've had Sean and Kelly come on. Tony Gallagher says, good morning, so as to Sean and Kelly. Uh, Sean says, any chance of breakdancing demo, mate? Well, he did it off camera. He did a little bit of a jiggle just as people were coming on. And while, good morning, Luke and Tony says, Kelly, uh, good morning. Both. <laughs> well, uh, Tony, I don't know if that's the wind moving you, mate. I know it's quite windy where you are today, or is it actually your moves? Um, no, you it's, it's, it, it's my, my moves, Luke. I'm uh, being like uh, Bruce Lee, being like... Uh... Uh, I was actually going to say I'm being like water. It might, might be the wind. But anyway, let's get on to the topic, mate, because my dancing is quite simple. All right, so it's all and, about uh, the mindset of an Olympian. <laughs> uh, in general, Tony, before we get into the individual topics that we want to talk about, what kind of things come to mind with having that mindset of an Olympian? It's, yes. Yeah. Well, I was listening to an interview by Kate Campbell uh, a couple of days ago. Kate Campbell, a, a wonderful uh, swimmer, one of our sprint swimmers. She's at her fourth Olympic Games, and fingers crossed uh, to Kate. Go, Kate. She lives in the same suburb as me, so go, Kate. Uh, but she was talking about the fact that, you know, you train for four years for a race that goes for one minute. And now hers is a, a longer race. I mean, you know, same Bolts only went for 10 seconds. So, you know, it's about the mindset of I'm going to put it all on the line for four years, for eight years, for 12 years, whatever it might be, for an event that simply goes for one minute. And if you get that wrong, then you've got to wait four more years uh, to, to right the wrongs. And just the, 
the focus that goes into that, and she talked about the fact that, you know, she, she choked in, um, in her own standards, mind you, not in our standards, she got, got silver, but she choked in, uh, in the last Olympic Games in Rio, and uh, she just wanted that one minute back. That's all she wanted back, just that six, give me that 60 seconds all over again, and I'd do it very differently. And I just thought that's, that's amazing that you, you know, you put all that on the line. For that, I mean, football, you, you know, you, you train, you train, you train. If you lose one week, you get a chance to rebound the next. You get a chance to improve on the things that, you know, uh, you fell short on. But in the Olympics, you've got to wait four years. Oh, that's what makes it so special, Luke. What if you never get a chance again? Like some of these athletes go to the Olympics once. Now, Kate Campbell has the, four, you know, the fortuitous opportunity of going again and again and again. I think this is the third or fourth Olympics now. Yeah, fourth. 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 And Ken Murray said your percentage there, Tony, is 455 out of uh, 25 million people in the country. It's 0. 0.0, no, it's 0. 0.0018%. Well, there you go. So, there you go. So firstly, it's, it's great that we've got uh, our mathematician, Ken, our, our statistician, Ken, who's helping us. Thank you, mate, yeah. for doing that. And absolutely. It's such a small percentage, and which makes it so special. But, you know, the fact then that it goes once every four years so that you work, you get up in swimming. And in swimming, you, you, you put your head down, you look at your black line, you keep going day in, day out. Uh, for four years for the opportunity and you may not even make the Olympic team you know so there's those who like you said have missed out on the Olympic team so just getting in the Olympic team is a massive achievement uh, it, particularly in swimming in a country that we pride ourselves on our prowess to be uh, you know we, we're great swimmers uh, you know comparatively to the world and then from there to take it to the next level and uh, you know stand on the top of the dais so Tony, it, it, it's amazing. Tony considering that Kate Campbell's within your jurisdiction now um and you know are you like are you obviously close to her or spreading some aura around her as a mindset coach to get her to that next level of winning the gold in this olympics kind of reminds me of ben crow and the work he's doing with ash barty right now he's getting a lot of uh, fame and fortune um out of the uh, accolades or the success that ash barty is currently having look I, no i'm not doing any work with kate uh no i haven't got um uh, an Olympian who's working with me yet. Uh, but uh, yeah, look at mindset, you know, Kate, if you're tuning in from, uh, uh, from Tokyo, good morning to you. Uh, but uh, it's all about mindset, right? And it's about the mindset of what does it take to be an Olympian? I can't relate directly because I'm not one, but I can certainly, uh, I've got a level of understanding as to what it would be and the commitment that's required. You know, we get to see, we get to see you, Luke, every week here. Now you've got an, a, a massive commitment and dedication because of your you know, commitment to your running uh, each and every day. And that's the sort of thing that it takes. You know, obviously Olympians are, are doing it you know, far greater than you. I think they're training for about eight, six, eight hours a day, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, six days a week. You know, they don't get public holidays. They don't get, uh, you know, they get one day off a week to uh, uh, let the muscles recuperate and then they go again. So it's a massive, massive commitment uh, over a long, long period of time for a race that lasts for less than a minute. It's incredible. Yeah, I'd love to hear from the audience right now just to see if they're, in, they're doing anything that kind of reminds them that they are doing something with a mindset of an Olympian. It'll be really interesting to see, um, you know, maybe not to the extent that they are doing and their eight hours or 10 hours a day of training, their absolute focus and dedication on their food and, you know, aspects of their training, um, getting it almost close to as perfect as possible each and every day. I'd love to hear from the audience um, what your thoughts are around that. Uh, Ken says, Luke also has uh, Luke also has a mindset of steel, says Ken. <laughs> oh, it's, a, it's an amazing mindset. We, we applaud it regularly and uh, yeah, it's, a real, it's a real thrill and privilege to me to be you know, speaking to you every Sunday and calling you a friend because I just look in awe at what you've been able to achieve. So, you know, good on you and obviously keep going, mate. We're, we're cheering you on to get to your 2000. Um, I want to go. I can't back wait to, to have that run with you on the two thousand. I need to get back into shape, which is actually a good. It's a nice segue into, um, uh, you know, you talk about sort of focusing for a period of time. I did a, a twelve week challenge, albeit five years ago now, and uh, and I could, gosh, I could do with one now. But anyway, uh, for twelve weeks, I didn't miss a beat. You know, so I trained for at least ninety minutes a day. My food was weighed to to the gram. And, and I didn't miss a beat for 12 weeks. That was enormously 
um, draining from a mental point of view. Like the focus, the concentration that I had to put into that for 12 weeks, I've got amazing results. And I'm you know, so thrilled with myself that I was able to do it. Uh, and I said to someone at the time that I wanted to find something that was going to stretch me, but wasn't going to break me. And that 12-week challenge seemed to be about, about it. I don't know if I could have gone much longer. I, I pretty much collapsed uh, over the, the finish line. I ended up having shoulder, shoulder surgery uh, several months after because I blew my shoulder out. But I didn't, didn't stop my training. I had to adapt. I had to ice it up. Uh, the kids thought it was funny. I'd go and train and ice my shoulder up every single day. But I had to do that to get through to the finish line because I was so focused on what I was wanting to accomplish. Yeah, it's really interesting that, like the whole aspect, and we might talk about it uh, a little bit later on, but thinking about the whole idea of like an Olympian going really hard for, you know, that that training when they're younger um, up until they get to the Olympics, their years through the Olympics, and that might be four years, it might be six, eight, ten years of Olympic events and uh, and other competitions around. Then when they come to retirement, because uh, their lifespan is probably up to about 30 years old maximum on yep. some of the swimmers, especially. And then after that, they, they, we've often heard news stories around the fame and fortune and then the, the collapse and, uh, and uh, you know, other things that do happen in their lives afterwards. Well, there's actually, I think we'd all be surprised as a society just how little um fortune there is i mean only those at the absolute echelon you know we don't tend to hear too much about those that uh, compete and don't get a medal we, we don't tend to hear too much about those who compete and get a, a bronze or a silver yes we absolutely uh, love our gold winners and and they tend to go on and get you know sponsorship deals and you know marketing deals and, and whatnot but uh, I, I actually you know i actually think the olympians in, in some respect do it tougher than the footballers because at least the footballers that they get a decent income uh that's their their, their job um you know they don't get much uh, in the way of um uh, you know monies uh, these swimmers obviously get sponsored by the the ais and those types of things but uh, i don't think they get much money unless of course you reach the absolute pinnacle uh of your of your chosen sport and even then yeah. some of some of the sports you could win a gold for example if you go and win a gold in shooting or in uh, in rowing or not maybe not rowing but certainly shooting or sailing or something one of those lesser known um, sports then uh, you know, I'd, I'd be fascinated to know the financial benefit that you got even though you're a gold medal winner even though we applaud you but uh, I think it's a case of it's not one of those more popular um, sports swimming for us is certainly you know, right up there um, so it'd be interesting to see the, the financial windfall that the, the people who get from the gold medal the lesser known yeah, um, just while you get a bit of a wing gust there, Sean says, does our 20-year plan count? After this week, our next five deals will be primed to go full steam ahead. Awesome. Good work, Sean. I, I, and that, that in itself, that's kind of like a marathon. I think Ken says the same thing about 28 plus years that he, Janelle and himself uh, have been doing it. Uh, shit, I'm doing a marathon, absolutely. So it's that dedication of it, like time and time again. And I actually see that as an even better sense of um, where you're going with your mindset, the consistency of it, of going day after day after day after day of it, um, rather than do those short bursts. Um, and it's kind of that roller coaster ride that often people do have. Uh, not taking away from what you did, Tony, that just thinking about the 12 week challenge or a six week challenge or a four week challenge. Um, but then what actually happens afterwards is a big thing for us. What happens to an Olympian afterwards? Do we have that ongoing de uh, dedication throughout or past that, you know, uh, short term period? Oh, look, I couldn't agree more, mate. You know, and I used that if I talk about my own personal experience, I used it as a way to kickstart me, uh, and it kickstarted me then into to other things. And I've talked about that a lot here. It kickstarted me into very different uh, fields, not the exercise field. I wasn't doing it um, to you know to be an Olympian. I was doing it more from a mindset in a point of view to challenge myself for that period of time. But then I didn't want to go and be a bodybuilder. That wasn't the point of it. It was just to get me going. And then it, it, you know, I sprung board. I used the same mindset into, uh, into other, other chosen fields and obviously property business, um, business coaching, business, et cetera. Uh, but it, so, so it's about, you know, what does it mean for you and how do we then use that as a coach? Good 
Good catch. What a catch. Thank you. Gosh, I'm still got the reflexes. So, yeah, who, who knows what you guys will be doing in 11 years. So, um, that's 2032, exciting. Tony Meredith is going to be up there on a podium. Uh, <laughs> great dancing. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. Uh, Sean says, great efforts, uh, mate, in terms of Ken. He also says, how close are you to the 2000 run, Luke? I need to start defrosting and running again. Uh, absolutely. I am about 700 days off the run, Sean. So a little while ago, a couple of more years before that actually happens. So we'll see how we go. But getting into the topics, in the, in terms of a mindset of an Olympian, Tony, mm. all the individuals out there, are you dedicated? Are you determined? Mm. What are your mm. thoughts? Well, well, the first thing is to have a goal. Have a goal. A lot of these uh, Olympians had little dreams as little kids. Uh, they they might have, you know, there might be some kids who are 10 or 12 or 6 or 8, whatever, watching the Olympics now. And those kids will be starting to, you know, go to sleep uh, dreaming that, uh, you know, dreaming of their idols, dreaming of their heroes, dreaming that maybe one day they can be them. So you want to have a goal. That's the first thing. And that's, that applies to everything in life. And the next is exactly right, Luke. It's about do what you do, actually, Luke. And it's about just do small things, but do them consistently, consistently, consistently. There'll be plenty of kids who will see the Olympics and for the next month will want to be an Olympian. And then they'll 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 drop off. That uh, novelty will wear off, and they'll move on to something else. And uh, and I'm not being critical of those, uh, those those kiddies, but that's the reality of it all. But it's those that push through that and are still dreaming of being an Olympian in six months, in nine months, in twelve months, and so on and so forth. So it's about do little things, but do them consistently, as opposed to big things, short bursts. And again, come back to my example where you know, I went full blown for twelve weeks, and then uh, you know I, once I had my surgery, it all it all uh, it all you know it all stopped. It all went to custard. I went to ice cream, maybe. Uh, but uh, but anyway, it's a case of small things sustainably is how we make uh, better change. Yeah, I actually heard from Jackie Cooper, an aerial mm -hmm. skier, yep, yep. Uh, gold medalist uh, at the Olympics and world champions, chip medals and all that sort of thing. Not only about going to the Olympics and, and preparing and trying to get that, that jump, those twists and turns that they do, outstanding <laughs> what they do. I can't believe it. It's not only that, getting there and have the perfection of that, but also in regards to injuries. Mm -hmm. you know, some of these sports then can really, you know, push you down into some really dark times. Like we see it in, you know, or like a lot of contact or um, high pressured on the body type of um, the sports that are out there, swimming to a lesser extent, but those impact sports are really tough. Um, and going through all that, looking for the perfection of that, that jump that Jackie Cooper went through each and every time. And also, if you miss it by that much, um, it's even less than that much, then it means that you have, you know, shoulder, knee reconstructions and you're out for a year and all that sort of thing. So it can really test you. And I'm, oh. I'm sure that plenty of people have been tested. Okay, yeah, absolutely. And it's also a confidence thing. So if you go and injure yourself, you know, I've injured myself playing contact sport. But, you know, you, you've got both knees done shoulder done uh you know you 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 are a little more tentative you aren't uh, doing as many steps uh, you know big side steps or uh, uh, you know you aren't putting yourself into uh, into the tackles or running as hard as maybe you want to used to because in the back of your mind you know you've got this little niggle here that talks about the fact that you know we've we've been injured and is my knee going to hold up is it going to hold up to the to the strains of playing uh, football or in Jackie Cooper's case, you know, is it going to hold up? So, you know, not only do you have the training side, but you've got the mental side. And obviously that's what we talk about every Sunday of, you know, um, am I, how, how can I get my head into this moment and forget about all my, my injuries and, and, and the what, what if scenario, right? And it's incredibly powerful from a mindset point of view to be able to do that. You know, you've got, takes enormous mental strength. Uh, it takes enormous mental strength to be an Olympian, but even more so once you've, you've, you've had an injury and how do you then shut that down to just focus on this moment that's in front of you? Yeah, absolutely. Look, there's a, there's a lot that you need to go through. And I guess what we want to do today is get in the mindset of an Olympian and then reflect that back on different things that you are doing in your life. You know, what can you do just to have that little bit of a mindset of an Olympian or take a little piece of what they do each and every day to just give you that next level up, that slight level up. And that is is where we want to bring it to you guys. You know, maybe it's 
a case that Ken Murray, for example, is out on his doing his ice creams and he might want to put in one extra hour. Um, it might mean that Sean and Kelly make one extra call to, you know, potential development sites that they're looking at. It's, you know, uh, um, you know, and other people that are on here, I'm just using a couple of examples that yeah, I know yeah. personally uh, yep. of people that are on here, but it's just having that little bit more dedication, having that little bit more determination about what you do. I know Ken's at the moment taking a break from what, you know, his business as well and has a holiday. Obviously the rest and recuperation and knowing where the body is and what you know, and obviously looking forward to that rest and re recoup, uh, recuperation as well. So there's different aspects of that, Tony. Oh, look, absolutely there is. You know, firstly, let's start with the, the rest side of things. Yes, you know, and uh, it's one of the things that, um, you know, I mean, you're, you're, you're a bit different. You haven't rested for uh, X number of uh, days, so 1,300 days or something. But, uh, uh, you know, you do rest outside of uh, that. I do know that. So you, you run sort of normally over in 30, 35, 40 minutes, uh, maybe 35 minutes, 40, maybe 50 when it's with me. Uh, but, uh, but you do rest, uh, you do look after yourself because you've got to keep going, but you're right. Uh, you know, Ken, uh, enjoy yourself. He's got a business that is seasonal. And so, uh, absolutely, you know, focus on, you know, whilst the weather's uh, cooler, uh, get away, recharge, spend some time, uh, you know, um, you know, reflect on, uh, why are you doing all this sort of stuff? You know, we're not, uh, we're not, uh, uh, you know, living, um, living to work. You know, we're working uh, to live, working to enjoy uh, the things around us. So that's the first thing. The other thing that I'd say to people is it's about the consistency. Like you said, just do one more. We talk about plus one each and every Sunday. I think it probably comes up. Um, but do that on a consistent basis. Just do one thing consistently. If, if you have to do one more phone call uh, in your job, if you do uh, that one each business day, that's five days a week, 50 weeks a year, that's uh, 250 extra phone calls. There could be so many opportunities that present themselves from just doing that. Now, you've obviously got your, your base level of calls anyway, but if you take that plus one approach, you know, or if, if Ken chooses to, you know, go to one more destination, like you said, stay open for, you know, 15, 20 more minutes, you just never, never know uh, what may come up by just pushing that little, little bit further. But don't do it in short bursts, you know, for a week or two and then throw your hands in the air. It's about the consistency. Consistency, consistency is the key. Yeah, the, I guess the consistency of a of, of plus one, right? Mm. Yeah, Very absolutely. Sean, Ab Sean says, Monica Silas. Uh, the tennis player was a great example of for mindset when she was younger, an angry fan threw a knife and stabbed her during a match on the world stage. And she returned to the tennis stage a couple of years later. I do remember that as well. Yeah. Yep. Um, determination come back when, you know, with all that fear around you um, of that potentially happening again. Um, and what kind of like mental scars that, does that bring to that emotions that does attach for when you are on the tennis court to what you experience as well, because that can eat away in your mind and probably took her a couple of years before she can be then uh, comfortable with coming back on the court. Oh, of course. You know, th those things affect people. And she would have worked, uh, you know, long and hard with uh, psychologists to, uh, to, get, to get her into the right headspace, I'm sure, because I could only imagine the first, uh, first time, maybe the first, you know, who knows how many times she went back on the court, she would have been, you know, during those breaks in between games, she would have been, I'm sure, maybe had, uh, you know, one, one eye open on wondering what's going on around her. And that would have been only natural for her to do that, given you know, the extreme situation that it was. I remember that, uh, Sean, you know, good on you for bringing that up. So, you know, it's those sorts of things. And again, bring it back to the example, we talk about fourth injuries. When you, you might do a, a particular something to get an injury, you might you know, step off one foot or dive into a tackle or whatever it might be, you tend to get a little bit wary of that. Hey, guess what? It's only natural. And so it's about how do we you know, push, through, uh, push through those things. And again, it comes down to my goal means so much to me. It's my commitment to my goal. That's the bit there that people tend to lose sight of when they don't have commitment uh, to a goal. So you've got to absolutely have commitment to a goal. I know that people go, oh, here we go again, goal setting, blah, blah, blah. But it is so critical. I uh, need commitment to it. And then you just want to chip away at it, uh, you know, one day uh, at a time. Uh, Tony Gallagher says, nothing blooms in a garden all year round. Um, so yes, rest is very important. Uh, and Sean said, yeah, it's amazing how much you can just, a few extra calls can achieve. And also says, I bet it would be, it would have to be her coach that would have made um, the most difference for her. Um, but that is an assumption. So yes maybe reflecting back on you, Tony, as a coach, uh, saying how important is it to have, I guess, the team of people around you? 
Oh, look, people say, you know, let's let's talk about tennis, right? I heard someone say recently, or a number of people say, you know, it's such an individual sport, tennis. And I, I disagree, you know, from the point of view that, yes, the actual competition component is is individual, as in it's you against somebody else. So I get all that. But my golly, they have a team, they have an entourage with them. Wherever they go, they have, you know, they take some friends from a social perspective. They take their massage therapist, their physio, uh, physio, uh, you know, the physios, they take who, chiros, whoever it might be, team doctors, whatever it might be, they have an enormous number of people around them. Obviously, they're coaches, they're trainers, uh, people are hitting the balls uh, back uh, with them, so on and so forth. So even though there's individual sports, there's an enormous number of things. Boxers, you know, uh, you know, we saw uh, Tim Zhu, for example, just recently. He's got an enormous number of people. That, uh, that hang around him. And you could rattle off uh, whether it be golfers, boxers, tennis players, people are individuals. They are still, uh, you know, their competition may be individual, but they are part of a bigger team. Yeah, absolutely. I, I remember this Russian tennis player. I know in um, when they've got all, all the players' box area, he used to have three women in the box there. They were his team. I know Ash Barty obviously talks about her, on a serious note, uh, talks about her team each. No, but let me go back to that. So let's let's talk about that for a second. So it's all about self, self-awareness, self right? So it's about what do you need to have around you to ensure you perform at your peak? And he's obviously he's obviously established that, that his oh, self-awareness no. is, is he needs to have three, uh, three uh, you know, bucks and blondes around him or whatever it might be. Well, hey, that's terrific. But it's a team, it is a team uh, sport on a serious note. It's all about... I don't remember the guy's name, Marit Safin. I don't know if oh, yes. Yeah, a bit of, bit of a rock star. So, uh, yeah. you know, so, so yeah. So, but it's about having the right, the right team, the self-awareness of who are the people you need around you that are going to help, you know, lift you up and ensure that you're, you're playing at your optimum uh, each and every time. Yeah, like Tony Gallagher just said about Ash Barty as well. She mentions her team in each and every conversation. And that's why her coach, um, I think his name's Ben Crow, is getting so much notoriety at the moment for all the all the times that she talks about each and every uh, member of her team. Uh, Tony, just talking about what is needed each and every day is another item that we wanted to discuss. But uh, what is what is what is needed for us individually? You know, for those people that are in employment, run their own business, that are, um, uh, you know, want to be property investors, property developers. I know there's a few on here right now. Uh, what is needed each and every day? Plan. The first thing is a plan, Luke. We need to have a plan for the day. A lot of us, a lot of us uh, don't have a plan. If you fail the plan, you plan to fail. So some sort of direction for the day. I'd like to think that that day's plan then links up to your week's plan, which links up to your fortnight's plan. Months plan, six months, you know, one year, five years. Sean talked about a 20-year goal. Hey, that's awesome. I'd like to think, Sean, that your daily plan for you and Kelly is aligned to uh, your 20-year plan. So you need to have a plan. Uh, you need to then create time. Time is the one resource that we uh, don't, you know, can't, uh, can't make any more of. So we've got to have time to be able to go and do the things that we want to do. And the single biggest excuse that I hear from clients, non-clients, just people generally, is I didn't have time. I didn't have time. And uh, we all do have time. We all have the same amount of time. It's just that those that are more successful than others uh, leverage their time far better, um, you know, through a whole variety of uh, sources. So have a plan, create the time, and then put your left foot in front of your right. Take some action. Take some action. Take some action each and every day on the thing that you want to achieve. Recognising you're going to have days when you are feeling inspired, you've got high energy, and you're going to you know, leverage those days, but you're also going to have days that, uh, you know, don't you don't feel as good as previous, but you still take action each and every day. I guess on top of that, I would just like to add maybe belief uh, in yourself to be to be able to achieve it as well. Uh, Tony, uh, moving forward in terms of the the topic, do you do you have the mindset of an Olympian? <clears throat> when we were actually in those moments, this is the big one, I guess, where the difference in the good players. And the great players. Do you have? Uh, how do you deal with the pressure and the competition? Yeah, and and you see it in all sports. It's not just Olympics, but let's talk about Olympics. Uh, you know, and so go back to Kate Campbell. Kate Campbell 
the, she um, expended a lot of nervous energy. She had a very strong semi-final in Rio and expended a lot of energy. She was the, the, the all of Australia. All of Australia was, uh, uh, you know, behind her, cheering her on. And she let that enormity of that pressure um, affect her and she, she got she got pipped. She got pipped at the post. And, uh, you know, she expended a lot of energy in doing that. So it's about putting yourself in pressure situations. If we bring it back to, say, you know, footy players, they train, train, train. And even the better ones will train putting themselves in different scenarios. They'll play different scenarios in their mind so that when that happens in a match, then they'll feel like they've already been there, right? And the same will be with, uh, you know, for running, for example, if you're feeling off, you push yourself, you push yourself. Your, 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 your mind will, will um, your, <laughs> your mind, you can keep going, right? But you'll tell yourself, I can't go anymore. I can't go anymore. Your body can keep going. Right? It's your mind playing tricks on you. So you've got to be able to put yourself in that situation where you're building that muscle so that you can go that extra one minute, two minutes, five minutes, can run up that hill. Uh, you can run in the middle of the day. You put yourself in different situations and scenarios to create the, the resilience uh, to, to whatever is happening. Uh, because at that elite level in sport, it really is, in a lot of cases, there's, there's a, an absolute natural ability if i think about the likes of usain bolt just you know head and shoulders above the rest of us uh us the rest of the olympians uh you know but then also there's plenty of examples where pressure has taken over and that has been the difference you've got people who are you know similarly uh, uh similar standards from a sporting point of view but the person who can with, withhold uh, you know work through whatever the situation is going on they're able to rise you see that in sports all of these footballers that we see week in, week out, they are great footballers. Like to get to play first grade in NRL or, or you know, in the um, first grade in, in AFL, um, you're a great footballer. Like, let's not kid ourselves. It's just that even within teams, you've got those that are just head and shoulders above the rest because they're able to, uh, A, that they, they work a whole lot harder, but B, it's the pressure. Michael Jordan, you know, in the, in the last dance, what a fascinating insight that was. He worked so much harder than everyone else and he was so much more committed and he put himself through uh, the rigors and some would argue you know quite extreme well guess what he did that and he he had the uh, the results accordingly yeah absolutely um pressure and the and the competition it's an interesting one um sean says good players are competing against someone else great players are competing against themselves 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 yeah. always themselves always themselves absolutely Murray says maybe Murat Safin was a, a promise, uh, was on a promise. If he won, um, then that's motivation, I guess. Having that's those gone bombshells. Self, self awareness. It comes back to you know whatever is going to work to get you to get you performing uh, at your best. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, it was definitely PG at that time. So um, I, I guess this is what we want to bring for everyone today is thinking like an Olympian, have that mindset of an Olympian, just that little bit more, just that little bit more, a little bit more strength, a little bit more determination, a little bit more dedication. Um, what do you need to do each and every day? Do you put yourself through the, the pressures and the competition aspect like Tony is? Build that muscle. Tony, any final words on this topic today of an Olympian and... <laughs> You know, we want to congratulate each and every Australian Olympian or every Olympian that's around from around the world, especially during these times, like putting yourself in a position that, you know, COVID is quite intense over in Japan at the moment, um, very in, infiltrated within the, the Olympic village area um, and could have ramifications on their long-term health, but they're putting themselves in... Um, in the, the situation that they could uh, contract COVID uh, as a result of being there as well. So added pressure, added um, not having the crowds there. Uh, it is more about yourself even more so right now. I was just going to say that last bit, uh, Luke. I was uh, absolutely, so you're right. There's a whole lot of pressure around the health concerns and that's got to play on people's minds, you know, but it's about, you know, when you do your job, that particular job, if you're on the blocks or whatever your sport is, it's about getting into that zone and just focusing on this next swim or the next throw or whatever you've got to do. But you're right. How many sports people do we hear talk about the crowd helped me get over the line? They lifted me, you know, Know, and it, uh, uh, you know, they don't have that this time around. They don't have the, the crowds. Ash Barty has gone from 
uh, there was a, there was a shot I saw uh, a photo I saw the other day. Ash Barty's gone from you know Wimbledon with all the crowds there and cheering her on and the royalty and Tom Cruise and all these wonderful people to an empty stadium in uh, in Tokyo. Uh, you know, but she's got to lift herself. So absolutely, there's no crowd to lift you uh, anymore. It's simply a case of you've got to lift yourself. And uh, but it goes back to um, you know the whole competition is against yourself, and that's why we talk about PBs. PBs as kids, we talk we talk about PBs. You know, it's about what's your what's your personal best, doing better tomorrow than you did today, and that's that's the message. So my message, in summary, it normally takes me five minutes to summarise, is uh, be better today than you were yesterday, and be better tomorrow than you are today. And just to leave you with uh, Tony's comments from earlier: plan, time, action, and then I added beliefs in Believe. there as well Believe. Uh, for everyone. So guys. Great session this morning, Tony. Uh, fantastic topic that you brought up. Very relevant for these times. And hopefully everyone uh, stay safe, be well, and have some fun. Have some fun. It's Sunday, Tony. Break dance. Ooh. Let's get it out in a break dance. Tony representing Australia in the 2032 Olympics when he's at the ripe old age of 73. Is that what you're that, that'll do. 73 in 11... No, not 73. In 11 years' time. <laughs> Too funny. On that note, thank you. it's freezing, Luke. I'm getting blown away. Bye. See you later. I've got to go. Bye, guys. <laughs>